Well, you heard the sounds of weakness there from Lidl's U.S. CEO. What about the weakness the market's perhaps telling us about? The utility sector was the only S&P sector in the green in April, and it's off to a strong start again in May. Jim Cramer was talking about this last night on Mad Money. You can see the XLU, which tracks the sector, up 11 percent year to date and up 3 percent just this week. Not traditionally a great sign. And at the same time, we're seeing some of those growthy names fading following earnings. We mentioned Shopify earlier. It's Roblox today. Could this dynamic be a sign of more weakness ahead? Joining us now to discuss is David Bonson. He's chief investment officer at the Bonson Group. No fan of growth stocks generally, David, but welcome. Do you have, do you have concerns about the market, broadly speaking? Well, first, Kelly, I want to say welcome back. You've been missed. It's Thank wonderful you. to have you back on air. And I do have concerns about growth stocks, but not because I'm against growth. Growth is what you always want to invest in. It's just that the growth you're paying for, you're having to overpay. And what a lot of the names we're talking about experiencing weakness, they can't be called growth stocks when all, the only thing that's grown is how much money they lose. Uh, Beyond Meat was a $240 stock. It's now a $7 stock. And each year their losses went higher. And that's where some of the, the quality of the growth names is not exactly the same from some of these big tech names that are really big growth, really big money makers, but I just simply criticize their price, their sure. valuation. I think that's a different category than the Shopify's, DoorDash's, and yes, even Beyond Meat. And maybe there'd be two different ways to diagnose sort of the decline of growth stocks. One would be interest rates being higher than expected. Uh, maybe making them look a little bit less attractive. But that would ultimately be a sign that the economy was somewhat strong, hopefully. The other would be if the economy is slowing. And so their apparent growth is also not materializing for that reason. That would obviously be a bigger problem for the market. Which of the two do you think it is? I really think that in this case, it's simply the valuation. In other words, um, the bond yields haven't really moved for about a year. True. You know, it's gone a little higher than the 10 years now. It's gone a little lower, but it stayed here in this four and a half range. So that valuation issue about growth, it relies on direction. And the direction hasn't worsened. It's just flatlined. Uh, it isn't like yields are, are, are strongly higher than they were. And it's putting downward pressure. The P.E. is actually higher. The, the market multiple is 21 times, 22 times forward earnings. And so I really do think it just has to do with the fact that you get to a point where it isn't a good value proposition to buy something that is good today at such a high price that the expected rate of return over time is so minimized. I think that that's the economics you've run into with a lot of the leaders in the market. I mentioned utility stocks. I mean, where are you as a firm making the most money these days? Or is this an opportunity to to find some stocks where you can you know, get a good valuation on a pullback? What are you up to? Well, we're dividend growth investors, and so we tend to be rather bottom-up focused. And there are certain names in financials, consumer staples, energy, and healthcare that have all done very, very well for us. And frankly, the blended multiple of our portfolio is less than 15 and a half times. Mm. So I don't think there's the same valuation with a lot of the value and especially dividend-oriented uh, sectors. But energy is still, to me, a very compelling space. It's not as cheap as it was a few years ago, but 40% returns year over year can't happen all that often. Um, but Kelly, I really think that you're, you're right about utilities. People say the defensives are a bad sign, but consumer staples, utilities, healthcare, real estate, all trading together would be a bad sign. Hmm. They're not. There's a real dispersion of results amongst those four more def defensive sectors. I think it's a bottom-up market in dividend growth. So well, could utilities then be one of these, as everyone is saying, uh, kind of electricity demand secular winners as opposed to a sign of a slowing market? Yes, I think that's right. And I think that for us, American Electric Power, ticker AEP, happens to be the only utility name we own. We have a good position in it. But that's not a comment on the sector. It's just that that's the name that we like with valuation and dividend growth we want. Uh, but I do think that electricity, but you can apply it to other things besides utilities, the same concept. It's the things that people have to have no matter what, that where there's a good balance sheet, where there's re recurring cash flows, you can count on it more. And you don't have to worry as much about what bond yields are going to do, what the Fed's going to do, what the next CPI tape is going to print. It becomes much less headline driven and a little bit more fundamental. And you can take a little further timeline in the way you approach the investment thesis. Quickly before you go, we're showing your picks there. Uh, pretty much all of which are in the healthcare space. What, 
I don't know what, how, how to ask this question. What inning are we in or how much more do you think those stocks have to run? Because they're starting to sound to me, at least, like uh, they're becoming consensus favorites. Well, I, Gilead certainly is not. Gilead is, is down quite a bit and is out of favor. And that's one of the reasons I added that name, because I think you have a really juicy dividend, tons of cash on the balance sheet, a really favorable financial metric of the company. And then you just need time for this investment they've made into oncology. And they're already a huge HIV drug leader to play out. Uh, Amgen's definitely become more consensus. And that's too bad because I've had a free ride on that thing from about $60 <laughs> wow. up to 300 uh, it's grown its dividend 15% per year and you're hanging for on the to decade it? or so that we... Yeah, we do plan to hold on to it, although right now you really not only do you have over 3% dividend with double-digit dividend growth, a um, lot of cash and a really diversified portfolio, but apparently their, their stage two results for this weight loss treatment went so well, it's going into clinical stage three, you get a kind of call option on them joining True. the whole Ozempic fad. And so it's not usually an investment thesis for us, but we're not going to let go of it with that hanging out there. Understood. David Bonson, great to check in with you. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it Thanks, today. Kelly.